Kareem Khan, the, the prosecutor of the ICC, opened the investigation within a week of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, issued an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin for the forcible um, transfer of Ukrainian children to Russia, immediately, without question. In this case, it took it took the prosecutor, Kareem Khan, three weeks to travel to Rafah in order to investigate what was in the first week an evident example of genocidal intent, mass killings, the destruction of, of those conditions of life that would reduce the ability of Palestinians to, sur to survive. In this situation, what we see is a, not merely a repetition of history, but a continuation of colonial legacies, and one that led to the failure of the League of Nations frankly, in the aftermath of Italy's invasion of Ethiopia in 1935, where a fascist Italy led by Mussolini invaded Ethiopia. And in that moment, Ethiopia, which was a member state of the League of Nations, and rather than hold Italy to account, which was dropping indiscriminate chemical weapons on the Ethiopian people, instead, the Red Cross decried the Ethiopians as being too savage to follow the laws of war. Media were running headlines that Ethiopians were hiding and sheltering in hospital, using them as human shields. And world powers failed to impose uh, sufficient sanctions on Italy in this moment. And this demonstrated the limits of these international um, institutions and led to the failure of the League of Nations in a similar—we are in a similar moment right now. These international institutions need to act. And instead, we're seeing a stalemate, and we're seeing international um, leaders like the, led by the United States, as well as the UK, as well as France, who are basically providing a green light to Israel to commit genocide, to commit these atrocities. This is not out of nowhere. Everything started before October, before October 7th. And Israel, this is a moment where Israel has not been held to account. It is a systematic failure to hold Israel to account for decades. International organizations have said that Israel is practicing the crime against humanity of apartheid. There was a near consensus between 20, 2020 and 2021. And yet, rather than impose sanctions in that moment, rather than mobilize international mechanisms and institutions in order to dismantle apartheid, we saw the United States celebrate and normalize Israeli apartheid, and we saw them continuing to normalize relations with other Arab regimes. It was this fundamental failure that has led us to this moment and an ongoing crisis of a lack of accountability, of an imposition of two types of law, one for the global north, one for the global south. This is a hypocrisy on the part of Western um, governments and, and demonstrates that there, there is no such thing as Western universalism, but instead continues to be two sets of laws on two sets of people. And, and what's wonderful, the only thing that provides us hope is that a mass, mass movement of individuals, peoples, communities have risen up against their governments, also to demonstrate the hypocrisy of, of Western democracy. Even in the United States, consider that 66 percent of Americans have demanded a ceasefire, 80 percent of registered Democrats have demanded a ceasefire, and yet only 19 out of 535 members of Congress have endorsed it. Consider that that same Congress censored the only Palestinian American representative in government at the very moment that she represents the majority. So this is not just a crisis of international legal institutions, but also a crisis of democratic or so-called democratic institutions in the countries in which we live.